Welcome back to this video series on algorithms and algorithm analysis. In the supplemental part, we'll introduce another asymptotic proof technique using limits. Note that we'll assume some familiarity with calculus, including basic derivatives and basic limits. Recall that with big O, big theta, and omega, to prove a relationship, we would have to derive an inequality. That is, we'd have to find constants C and n naught, or in the case of theta, we'd need to bound it above and below with two constants. An alternative proof technique is to set up and solve a limit. In general, this method is much easier but requires some basic calc knowledge. To demonstrate the idea, consider two functions, f of n and g of n. We set up a limit of the ratio of these two functions. In general, these will be functions that are a product of algorithm analysis, so we will assume that they are monotone and non-decreasing functions one of three things could happen with this limit. It could converge to zero. In this case, it would mean that the denominator is growing faster than the numerator. Or it could converge to some positive constant, which means that the two functions are growing at the same rate of growth. Or it could diverge off into infinity, which means that the numerator, f of n, is growing faster than the denominator, g of n. These three cases give us the following results. If the limit converges to zero, that means that g is growing faster, and thus f is big O of g. If the limit converges to a non-zero constant, that means that they have the same rate of growth, and so f is big theta of g. Finally, if it diverges, it means that f is growing at a faster rate, and so f is big omega of g. Let's demonstrate using the limit method on a few examples that we've already seen. First, we'll show that 100n squared plus 50n is big O of n cubed. We set up a limit of the ratio of these two functions. We can then break it into two terms. Since the limit of sums is equal to the sum of limits, we can examine two separate limits. And simplify the limits by taking constants outside and canceling terms. In calculus or an analysis setting, you may need to prove that these two functions actually converge to zero with a delta epsilon proof. However, they are simple and obvious enough that we need not prove it here. Since the limit converges to zero, by the first case of our limit theorem, f is big O of g. Here's the second example that we looked at involving two logarithms. We use the same change of base formula to convert the denominator to log base two. And simplify. Since the limit does not depend on n, it's simply a constant. And so by the second case, we've shown that log base 2 is big theta of log base 3, and by extension, vice versa. Here's a new example. We'll show that the logarithm function is bounded by a linear function. When we set our limit, we have a monotone growing function on both the top and the bottom that don't simplify algebraically. So we can apply Le Hapital's law and take the first derivative of each function. The derivative of log base 2 can be done by converting it to base e, that is the natural logarithm, first. After simplification, we observe that the limit converges to 0. And so log of n is big O of n. Here's a simplified version of a previous example. We want to show that 2 to the n is big O of 3 to the n. If we apply Le Hapital's law here, we won't make any progress. The derivative leaves both exponential functions undiminished. Let's try that again. Always look for algebraic simplifications first before applying more advanced techniques. Since 2 thirds is less than 1, the limit as n tends towards infinity will diminish this term down to 0. And so we've shown the big O characterization. Several more examples are available on our resources page. 